Our Father and our God in heaven, we just want to say thank you. Thank you once again for the opportunity to gather as a family, to fellowship, to reveal your word. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your light shine. Let your truth be made known. And our lives are transformed in the name of Jesus. Father, I use myself as your vessel. That Lord, you would use me to speak your word. And that your word would come with accuracy and clarity. That everyone who hears is blessed. And the name of Jesus is glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be graciously seated in God's awesome presence. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is really good. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly open your Bibles with me as we continue from where we left off last week in the book of Mark chapter 9. We are reading from verse 14 to 23. Mark chapter 9 from verses 14 to 23. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. The scriptures are on the screen. Perhaps your app is not working or your Bible, you forgot it. But for any reason, you don't have access to the scriptures. The Bible is right. The texts are right there on the screen. Hallelujah. Now, can we read together one to go? And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and the scribes were with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him, and he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowds answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him, he throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they may cast it out. But they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. He asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often as he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Amen. Jesus is saying to you and I this hour, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I've captioned this sermon, doing the impossible. Hallelujah. Doing the impossible. Last week, we began this journey as we began to explore the fact that anything is what? Possible. And I said it that as a child of God, for everyone who identifies Jesus as his Lord or her Lord and Savior, the scripture says that what? Anything is possible. Praise the name of the Lord. However, we understand that in the realm of man, if there's anything that we unanimously agree that it's impossible, it's majorly because of the nature of man. Hallelujah. And we establish the fact that man by nature is limited. In other words, our ability is limited. And for that reason, whenever our abilities or our inabilities manifest, we term that situation as what impossible. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible clearly tells us that it may be impossible with men, but not with God, because with God, all things are possible. And so for today, we'll begin to establish how did impossibilities begin to exist. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I said here that throughout the existence of mankind, we, are, we have numerable examples of impossibilities in scripture. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that when Moses asked the children of, of Israel to go and spy out the land that the Lord had promised, the Bible said that what they came back saying that what it was impossible to possess the land simply because what? We were like grasshoppers in their sight. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
But you understand that what, when we are talking about impossibilities, I believe, personally speaking, that God intentionally designed it so after the disobedience of man, simply because he wanted to constantly ensure that if you and I were ever going to do the impossible, it's not because we did it on our own, but because we were able to align with God to ensure that that circumstance came to pass. And so I said it here and I've said it over again that life was never designed to be lived independent of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Life was never designed. It was never the intention of God that you and I will exist outside of him. As a matter of fact, when you look through scripture, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we see that the original intent for creating man was for what? Fellowship. Praise the name of the Lord. So you understand that God by design intended that at every point in time, you and I would perpetually have fellowship with him. Genesis 1.26, it says that what? Come, let us make man in our image and likeness. Praise the name of the Lord. And so fellowship was the primary motive for you and I to be created by God. But we understand that when God or when Adam disobeyed God, or when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, part of the consequences of that disobedience was the manifestation of impossibilities. Praise the name of the Lord. So in other words, impossibilities became the reality of mankind the moment man disobeyed God. And we begin to see an example. Genesis chapter 3, the Bible tells us that what? Verse, from verse 17, it says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. It says what? Cursed is the ground for your sake. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you realize that Every time hardship or difficulty is encountered, it was never the intention of God. Life was not supposed to be what? Difficult. Praise God. Here it says, when you read Genesis 2, when God was creating the earth, after creating everything, the Bible says that what? He called Adam and told him, you are at liberty to do anything you want with these animals. And the Bible said that what, whatever Adam began to name them, that was the name of that particular thing. Showing the, the unlimited scope of Adam's responsibilities. Anything Adam wanted to do, Adam was at liberty to do. But the moment Adam disobeyed God, the Bible said that what? Cursed is the ground for your sake. It says in toil... You shall eat of it all the days of your life. It says, both thorns and tistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. And it says, till you return to the ground. For out of it, it says, you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. Praise God. But now we look at the from verse 22 to 24. The Bible said that then God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, you to know good and evil. He says, Now lest he put out his hand and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. He says, Therefore, God sent him out of the garden of Eden till the ground to till to till the ground from which he was taken off. And my emphasis in the verse 24. And the Bible said that to what? So he drove out the man, hallelujah, and placed cherubims at the east of the garden of Eden and the flaming sword, which was turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Hallelujah. In other words, you begin to understand that this thing that we call impossibility is simply because God was taken out of the picture. Praise the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, I said that the, days of, that the beginning of impossibilities was when man was separated from God. And so therefore, whenever you encounter an impossibility, the first response 
should be as a Christian. Where is God in all of this? Praise the name of the Lord. Simply because you understand that when God is present, anything is what? Possible. Praise the name of the Lord. In the first service, I was saying it that in dealing with God, we must keep an open mind. An open mind simply because God can do anything. God can use anyone. God can use anything. So long as it is God that is involved, the Bible recommends that what? He, everything, it says in him, all things what consist. Praise the name of the Lord. And so with God, everything and anything is possible. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is highly crucial because you understand, for example, when you look at the certain of Israel, the Bible recommends that when it was time for them to leave Egypt, move into the promised land, the Bible says that what? God told Moses that you will lead these people out of what? Egypt into the promised land. And for many of us here, whenever we read that story, we never read the story from the mind of those who have been led. We always see from the Moses perspective. Praise the name of the Lord. But now if you understand that story and perhaps you begin to imagine for a moment what life would have been like in that particular instant. Because you realize that when God was telling Moses to lead them, the people of Israel were never privy to what God was saying to Moses. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, for example, all the time that God was saying, why are they crying before me? Tell them to move forward. They never heard. It was only Moses who was in that particular point in time hearing what God was saying. And so you realize that in their life, you could have imagined the kind of fear and torment that they have been facing. Because right before you, you are confronted with what? Impossibility. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, it's, it's, it's the American cars. When you look just at the bottom of the side mirror, it says that objects in this mirror looks more closely than they appear. In other words, don't go and judge that this thing is close and think it's very close because in actual fact, you would hit somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that even for them, even if they could swim, how far can you swim? Because, you know, when you, when you begin to judge or when you begin to look at the ocean, for example, it can be very deceptive. Why? Because you're looking at it from an elevated standpoint. And so you think that the distance is very short. But if you have ever tried to swim in a river before, you realize that it is better not to swim because eventually you would what? Drown. Not because you can't swim, but simply because you don't have the strength or the tenacity to even swim that distance. Praise the name of the Lord. And so for them, even if they could swim, there was no point even attempting to swim. Now you look back, Pharaoh and his chariots are coming. And what they are coming for, they're not going to come and pat your back and say, oh, come, let's go back. No, they were coming for destruction. And so there was nothing within their mind of what God could do. But the Bible said that what? For their sake, God what? Parted the Red Sea. Praise the name of the Lord. And so again, I say that when you are dealing with God, it is to your advantage that you keep an open mind. Because what? God can do anything. Praise the name of the Lord. God can do what? Anything. That's why I was telling someone that when it comes to dealing with God, all you need to do is to pray to God for that particular situation. How he does it is not your business. At the end of the day, when God asks you, did I do it or not? So long as your answer is yes, he has done his part. Praise the name of the Lord. Because with God, what? All things are what? Possible. Praise God. And so I said here that the existence of impossibility in the life of a believer is the simple absence of God. Praise the name of the Lord. That the reason why things become impossible for the believer is simply because God is not in the picture. Every time God is involved in anything, 
There is nothing impossible for God. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, that's why Luke 137 will say that what? With God, all things are what? Possible. Praise God. And that's why for us as Christians, this must be our default mindset even as we embark on the journeys of life. That so long as God is with me, nothing is impossible for me. Praise the name of the Lord. It's highly important. Hallelujah. And so in setting the stage last week, we were saying, we looked at the anchor text that we read, that the reason why the disciples could not heal the man whose son was possessed with a mute spirit was simply because, number one, physically speaking, Jesus wasn't there. Praise God. The absence of Jesus meant that they were confronted what? With an impossibility. But the moment Jesus came onto the scene, the Bible recommends that what? In that very instant, the boy who was mute began to speak. And so we said that Jesus gave us a template for us witnessing the impossible. Number one was that if we're going to embrace possibilities, we must be what? A people of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Simply because Jesus said that the template for doing the impossible was that you and I must not be faithless. As a matter of fact, he said to them in Mark 9, verse 19, he says, oh, faithless what? Generation. Praise God. Number two is that what? By virtue of our believing, you and I must be given to what? Certain steps that we must actively be taking if really and truly we are going to see the power of God on display over that situation. And thirdly, we must always ensure that God is always in the picture. And so for today, and the few minutes that we have, we begin to look at the subject then, what then is faith? Praise God. What then is what? Faith. I say this because this is the foundation for your Christian experience. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith is the foundation for our Christian experience. Every single thing that we do. Now, look at what the Bible says here in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that now faith is what? The substance of things what? Hoped for. For many of us who did chemistry in school, we know that anything that is substance is something that can be seen, can be touched, in other words, it's not an imagination. Praise the name of the Lord. And so if you're saying that faith is the substance of things hoped for, every time you say you are hoping for something, you must always ask yourself, what is backing up my hope? Because that thing that backs up your hope or that should back up hope must be what? Faith. If you are really going to see the delivery of what God promised. And the scripture said that what? It is also the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Therefore, even before anything is made manifest, what you are trusting God for, something must be happening in the background to prove that you believe what you are going to see. So look at what the Passion Translation says. It says that now faith brings what? Our hope into reality. It says that what? Faith brings what? Our hope into reality. It says that what? It is the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Hallelujah. It is what? All the evidence required to prove what it was. As a matter of fact, when you read the verse 2 of Hebrews 11, it says, for by it, the elders obtained what? A good report. In other words, if you want to have a good testimony, it must be on the premise of what? Faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Now, the question is, how then do I differentiate between faith and hope? How do I differentiate between faith and hope? Because many are times, 
What we regard as faith is actually what? Hope. Because simply hope is an expectation. I know that God is able to do this thing. Praise the name of the Lord. And so for that reason, I'm hoping. Hope is saying that one day I know God will do it. Praise God. But faith is the assurance that God will do it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hope is futuristic. In other words, one day is in the future. But we know that faith is now. Many a times when you read books on healing, one of the things that people fail to realize when it comes to healing is that they ask them, do you believe God is able to heal you? Yes, I believe. When do you want to be healed? That becomes a challenge. Praise the name of the Lord. But when you read Hebrews 11, the first word that you see in that verse 1 is that what? It says that what? Now. Not tomorrow. Now. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you see, with faith, there's a sense of urgency. Praise the name of the Lord. Look, for example, Mark chapter 10 from verse 46. Mark chapter 10 verse 46. The Bible said that Jesus and his disciples were walking. And there was a man called Bartimaeus who was blind. And the Bible said that what he heard that Jesus was in town. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, perhaps I'm just imagining. If you were going to ask blind Bartimaeus before that incident... Do you believe that Jesus can heal you? Oh yes, I hope to meet him one day. Praise the name of the Lord. But the day he heard that Jesus was passing by, what, what changed? That hope moved to what? Faith. Because he said that what? Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible said that Jesus made it clear that what? Your faith has made you whole. Praise the name of the Lord. So when it comes to the subject of faith, there's an urgency. Lord, not tomorrow, today. I remember listening to a story of Ora Roberts of blessed memory. You know, after he was having a healing meeting and many people had come to be healed. And so this guy, while he was going to his car, the boy came to meet him, a very young boy, and told him and said, sir, and the man said, you know, I'm tired. I can't lay my hands on everybody, because then, back then, or robots, for, for many of us who know them, they would physically use their hands to lay hands on everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the man was exhausted. But the boy said, I know I'm supposed to be healed today. Praise the name of the Lord. I know that what? I'm supposed to be what? Healed today. That's why you understand that for everybody who got their healing or their testimony, there was a sense of urgency. The woman with the issue of blood, she said, I know. That's why hope is that it might happen in the future. Faith is the belief and the assurance it must happen. She said, I know that if only I would touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is what faith is. But the challenge for you and I now becomes, how then do I begin to walk in this reality? Praise God. As a matter of fact, F.F. Bosworth said that real faith rejoices in the promise of God as if it saw the deliverance and was enjoying it. That's why when you read the story of Abraham, the moment God, the Bible said that word, and Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Because the moment God made that promise, Abraham never saw himself as barren. Praise the name of the Lord. The moment God made that promise to Abraham, the Bible never recorded at any instant whatsoever whether they doubted whether God will or God won't. Because the Bible said that what? Who against hope in hope believed God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So how then or what then is faith? I said here that faith is the only key 
with which we access the benefits of the finished work of Christ. Anything you can imagine that Jesus did for you. Anything that you can imagine. I want to tell you this. If you don't have faith, if you don't have faith, you will never have it. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything that, that's why you realize that as free as salvation is, the basis for you being saved was an account of the fact that somebody preached to you, you heard, you believed, you had faith, and then you were saved. When we're growing up, we'll be singing that song, Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. But guess what? It is never yours without faith. Galatians 3. Galatians 3 from 26 to 29. Galatians 3, 26 to 29. The Bible says that for you are all sons of God through what? Faith in Christ Jesus. It says for as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And the verse 29 for emphasis says, And if you are Christ, hallelujah, it says, Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the word promise. Praise the name of the Lord. Every promise of God in scripture is accessible by what? Faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews 11 verse 6 makes it clear. It says that what? For we know that without faith is what? Impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must do what? Believe. And that he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Everything you and I will ever want in Christ Jesus is accessible on the platform of faith. And that's why the Bible says that what? Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be what? A performance of those things that have been spoken to her. Until you are able to believe God is limited. Praise the name of the Lord. Until faith is able to be present, God will look as if he's incapable of doing things. But we realize that it is through faith we access our inheritance in Christ Jesus. So the question now is, how then does this faith come? Because if I know what faith is, my next approach would be, I need this faith as a matter of fact now. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I don't know about you, I have needs. I have needs. There are things that I want God to do for me. And I assume that that is the same thing for your life. But we realize that we must know how to get it. If we are really going to enjoy his benefits. Praise the name of the Lord. And F.F. F. Bosworth said that what? Faith begins when we know what? What the will of God is. This is highly important. Faith starts when you know what the will of God is. Praise the name of the Lord. Many a times we'll say that, you know what, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. That's good of a cliche to say. But you understand that you don't begin your faith walk without knowing what God's mind is. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why James will say that when you pray, you do not receive. Because what? You pray amiss. The praying amiss there is simply that you are trying to shoot and you're not hitting the target simply because you don't know what you should aim for. Praise God. When we know what the will of God is, it gives what? A certain confidence. That's why John, 1 John 5 verse 14 it says, now, this is the confidence that we have. That when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if he has heard us, we have what we have asked of him. It's a confidence. 
That's why you realize that every circumstance Jesus confronted, he never prayed because he always knew what the will of God was. Praise the name of the Lord. He knew what the will of God was over that situation. Because when we know what God's desire is, all of a sudden, it begins to change our approach to the matter. Things that we normally be begging about, we are now taking command of because what this belongs what to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This what belongs to me. How does faith come? You will read with me Romans 10. Romans 10. Faith can only come through one channel. In other words, you can't pray for faith. Praise God. If you can fast and fast and fast and say, Oh Lord, give me more faith. You would never have that faith simply because the Bible has given us a requisite protocol for receiving faith. The Bible says, Romans 10. This is why it says from verse 14. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without what? A preacher. And how shall they preach unless what? They are sent. And it says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Who bring glad tidings of good things. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, the Lord who has believed our report. Verse 17. So then, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. That's why I said, Faith begins when you know the will of God and the will of God is what? The word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because this is the confidence that we have. And that's why you realize that you must constantly expose yourself to places where you are influenced by the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I've given an example here before that the difference between a metal and a magnet is simply what? Fellowship. Praise the name of the Lord. Science tells us that if you rub a metal long enough on a magnet, you will know the difference. Because what the magnet can do, the metal can do. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that so long as we are in the environment where we are intentionally listening to the word of God, the Bible tells us that's what? That is how faith begins to come. And guess what? You don't build faith in times of emergency. You build faith for that day of emergency. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why you realize that as a child of God, Sunday service is not enough. That you came to church on a Sunday for 30, I struggle now. My time is up. And so, 30 minutes most you heard and you think is enough. It's never enough. Because you realize that every single day you are hearing things that contradict what you believe. And guess what? Words are like seeds. As you, as you keep sowing it, the more they'll keep bearing fruits. And so if you and I consciously and consistently begin to create systems of perpetually hearing the word of God, you will be amazed how you would respond on the evil day. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember one time, I still do it, but this is when I started doing it initially. Every day I will go to bed, I will listen to sermons over and over and over again. It was my practice. I mean, I was single then, no child, no wife, nothing. So all I just knew was, Work, home, church. Work. It was very triangular. Praise the name of the Lord. And I had written an exam. And that exam, everybody said it was hard. For anybody who has written ACCA, Advanced Financial Accounts, it's my goodness. And for some reason, I had a dream. And in that dream, a friend of mine just told me, that exam, you failed it. 
if you see how I reacted in my spirit. I said, I cannot fail that exam. Now, I never knew. And guess what? Only for me to wake up that morning, the result had come out. And I did not fail. Praise the name of the Lord. But all I'm trying to make you understand is that what? It is what is inside that will respond on the evil day. Joyce Meyer will say that as human beings, we are like a soap a dispenser. You never know what's inside until you apply pressure. So when life begins to pressure us, it's the things that we have stored up in our hearts that begins to come out to the forefront. And if indeed you have been filling yourself with faith words, when times your challenge come out, what will come out of you are faith words. And in the things of the spirit is the things that you say that determines what you see. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in conclusion, someone said that I have seen faith rise mountain high when the truth of God's present love and compassion begins to dawn up in the minds and hearts of the people. It is not what God can do but what we know he yearns to do that inspires faith. Because you see, when you know that God is eager to heal, you are no longer doubting if he would heal or not. When you know that God is eager to provide, you are no longer questioning will he provide or not. Because even the Bible said that even if you men know how to give good gifts, how much more of God your father. Praise the name of the Lord. This is how we are able to build faith to take delivery of all that God has, has promised us. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us bow our heads as we pray. For the many things that you have heard, begin to commit them to prayer. That the Lord would grant you the grace to begin to build a discipline, a system that must ensure that every point in time of your life, you're giving yourself to the study of the word of God where you are able to now begin to have confidence with God to even come to the place of prayer. For even the Bible says that he who comes before God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the words that we have heard, O oh God. The Bible said that indeed that we should receive the engrafted word of God with meekness which is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the power in your word. That Lord, oh God in heaven, from this day forward, we begin to walk in this reality in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, oh God. In Jesus' name. Perhaps you are here, you are yet to make it right with the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you understand that faith is the foundation for which you receive everything. If you would like to make Jesus the Lord of your life, perhaps you're watching online, perhaps you are here, you would want to restore that fellowship. Maybe you were walking with the Lord at some point in time, issues of life choked up the word that you went your way. The Bible said that his hand is never too short to save, nor his ear too deaf to listen. Why don't you just say with me this hour, Lord Jesus? Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. I acknowledge that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day you rose again. I ask that you will grant me the privilege to walk in the realities of the new creation. Even as I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. Father God in heaven, I thank you for everyone who has made this prayer. I ask that Lord, your names are written in the book of life. That when you come again, we will rejoice together with you in heaven. And the glory shall be yours in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of Hallelujah.